Welcome, everyone, back again, Classic Culture, with our amazing guest today, Ian Constable, Mr. Two Bros Pro. Uh, welcome <laughs> here. Thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, we have our... Thank you for asking me. Uh, no, no, man. It's, uh, it's taken us a while, obviously, to, to, uh, to try to get you here. You're a busy man. Uh, but, uh, you know, thank you for being here. And, John, thank you again for, for turning up. <laughs> what? Always. <laughs> it's always a big occasion when John turns up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how's everything with you, uh, uh, with, uh, with everything going around you, man? Yeah, I mean, it's challenging. Uh, I've got to be honest. Um, obviously, we're in a landscape of continual changes. Um, so it's every day brings a new challenge. There's something different you've got to contend with. And I think one of the biggest challenges we face, well, I'm facing at the moment, is basically people's coming to terms with the difference in what was before and what is now. Yeah. Um, it's just, it, it, you know, it's actually um, quite sad when people are expecting things to be the same. Uh, again, things with like tickets, with registrations and that. And it's just, you just feel like you're constantly disappointing people um, mm -hmm. because of the restrictions that we've had put on us that we can't avoid. And they're not ours. They're not our restrictions. We just have to, you know, obviously follow the guidelines. It feels like as much as we're helping a lot of people and we're giving people a vehicle for them to be able to step on stage and obviously uh, win the pro card and what have you, it's also at the same time, we're having to disappoint people as well. You know, mm. especially with, at the moment, I'm just going through the continual um, changes with uh, ticketing. Uh, you know, everybody's worked so hard through lockdown and being able to do what they can with the tools they're provided. And then obviously now they've got access to gyms. It's yeah. like it then becomes disappointing when they realize that they can't have friends and family uh, in the audience. Um, right, right. And, and again, it's challenging for us to try and work out the best possible way to allow, you know, at the moment we're doing one ticket per athlete. Um, and it's difficult because some of the athletes are in, you know, three classes, you know, and yeah. it's like, so what, what are the guidelines Ian? what are the guidelines, the new guidelines for us to compete as competitors, uh, just for us to put out there for people to know? Well, it's obviously per venue. Um, so we've got to really stick to what the venue tells us. So as it stands at the moment, we can only have uh, up to 30 people backstage. So that's, you know, Obviously, it's upsetting for some of the athletes because they're used to being able to buy coaches' badges and the badges yes. passes and, and then come backstage and be with them every step of the, step, every step of the way. Um, we can't do that because any, any coach badge that we would pass out, we'd lose an athlete. And, mm -hmm. you know, our priority is the athletes. You know, unfortunately, it's not, it's not where we make our money, but the priority is with the athletes. Um, so literally, we've got to have 30 athletes backstage and that's only at one time. So we literally can only then offer, we're only allowed up to 30 people in the venue as well. The venue holds a couple of hundred spectators. Of course. Yeah. But we can't do anything more than um, 30 because that's the current guidelines. Um, so how, how come so? Because is that because, because I thought it was like one metre social distance. Is that because it's in a building? Because it's in the... Yeah, because it's, oh, okay. it's, it's inside and at current... Uh, currently we're adhering to the sort of wedding guidelines and the oh, wedding okay. guidelines is you can't yeah, have more yeah, than 30 yeah. guests. Oh, so okay. obviously being, uh, making sure that the theatres staying within, in the, in the guidelines as well, mm -hmm. they're, they're saying, look, let's put that in place. That's how we're going to guarantee the show goes on, you know, and yes. that's what I'm saying. Our, we don't want to step out of line because we want to make sure that it's a guaranteed day. Of mm. course. Of course, but what about what about uh, you know masks and everything like that? Yeah, has, has, has this been that. Yeah, again, the masks are currently it is a bit of a grey area. I've got to be honest. Um, masks are supposed to be worn in shops and various things, but it hasn't mentioned in terms of standing on a stage in a theatre. Mm -hmm. um, my priority would not to be wear masks on stage. Mm -hmm. um, we we will be distancing the athletes a meter and a half apart. Um, if they do have to wear it, if the guidelines come in, it's not really an issue because literally it's a physique competition. You know, you're being judged from the neck downwards. Exactly. And again, it's also, we also leave it up to the athlete as well. It is their choice uh, as mm -hmm. it stands at the moment. If someone feels that they want to wear masks, they won't be marked down. Mm. Definitely not. Um, mm. But again, we're trying to 
offer the best service we can in comparison with what we used to do. So if it's a personal choice, I'd say no. If an athlete wants to wear it, it's not going to hinder them in terms of judging. Mm. That's, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. John, John, are you ready to wear a mask on stage? No, I don't he wears a mask, mask anyway. Throws off the... <laughs> It, it throws off the propulsion, doesn't it? I don't want to be wearing a mask on stage. Well, no. do you know what? I, I don't think it's really an issue for men. It's more of the, nah, the, the, the probably women's... For the, yeah, probably for yeah. the bikini girls. Now, because it's really, that's part of the, the look as well, isn't it? Them being, yeah, you know, like, present, them being presentable on stage as well. That's yeah. part of... It's the overall package, you know, for, yeah. for, for the women, you know, they want to look... I mean, listen, it's a personal thing as well, you know. Yeah. It is part of... You know, you've just done 12, 14 weeks prep in the most difficult conditions there could be. Yeah, right. um, and, you know, you want to get dressed up on the day. You want to look your best. You want to make an effort. So does a mask put that out of sync? Yeah, it does. But if it's necessary, then health yeah, comes of first. Course. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I've, I heard that on the, um, on the Tampa Pro that uh, was recently done, that they done they had to wear masks on the pre-judging, but then at the finals they didn't because there wasn't as many people on stage. So, yeah, so they, that they dilute in two rows. Man. Well, this is again, this is what the situation keeps arising. We get a lot of DMs asking various different questions, obviously, in relation to this, in relation to this. And basically, every state in America, every country in Europe, everybody's got a different set of rules. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. all we can really do is what might be fair in one place and not in another is just stick to what, what the rules are here, you know, what, yeah. what we have to do. And if we have to do it, we'll do it. But taking into account if there's a little bit of leeway and obviously the preference of the athlete then we won't because mm. we want to we want everybody to have the best experience possible mm. right right it, mu it must be a uh, difficult because obviously my partner's about to do her first uh her first show with you guys and it's, it's definitely difficult i'm sure sort of uh, for the athletes to find out that they're only allowed like one ticket um because of like the covid obviously i'm sure all of them will completely understand but it must be difficult for you being the front man taking all the flack of all that <laughs> again that's part and parcel of what i do you know and, yeah. and before we make any decision you know it's not a decision based on whatever we want to do we just have to look at so many options before we issue or put a post out for anything there's so many things that have been taken into account that we're trying to navigate the best way forward and it was, and you know, it's difficult because some of the some of the classes, uh, sorry, the divisions don't have thirty people in it. So yeah. then, what you get is a situation where there's thirty people in, you know, bikini A, B, C, and D, and then there's twelve in figure. Mm. You know, so yeah, 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 yeah. Ultimately, there's eighteen spare tickets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so it's like, what we, can you do? Yeah, my, I mean, listen, I'd love to sell the place out ten times over. Which, if I'm honest with you, I'm sure we could. Mm. But this year for two bros, um, generally, most of the time, our profit after costs comes from ticket sales. So of course. all we're doing now is literally just trying to provide something of a service. And in terms of profitability, we're not in it for the profit this year. This year is just literally trying to maintain the brand, trying to maintain a service to the athletes and also appreciating that the athletes want to compete. You know, we're not making anybody do anything. We're just offering a service and it's for the people that want to compete and it's there for them if they want to do it. That's fair enough. Speaking of, speaking of the brand of Two Bros Pro, how, how, did this, the, how did the whole idea come to you? I mean, if you, you know, people would probably ask the same question here. How did, how did, you know, how did it come to your head for you to be able to put a show together and uh, you know, start the brand. And where did the where did the where did the name come from? Two Bros Pro. Well, obviously, um, the opportunity came around. Um, I was already involved um, with the Pro League and the MPC with some other business aspects. Um, being the fact that I was English, and there was obviously the rising issue um, in terms of how the previous people were dealing with athletes, the complaints they were getting. Yes. Um, and it and it came to a head in 2017. I'd been pre-prepped for it. It was like, mm -hmm. a, we're going to put some rules out to the amateur league and we're going to tell them this is the way it is. And if they don't do it, if they don't comply, they're out. Mm -hmm. And literally, mm -hmm. it was at the Olympia in 2017 when the big meeting went down. And the big meeting lasted about 
30 seconds. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was all very clear that they weren't going to adhere. They weren't going to do what it was. So everything had been set in motion, ready to take that into account. Everything had also been set in motion if it wasn't going to happen in terms of, um, you know, things are going to stay the same because really we don't want to break it up. You know, we, don't, we want to keep things as they are, but we can't put up with the complaints from the athletes. Of course. So I was prepped and there was, I think, three or four others. There was Emilio from Spain, uh, Genrico from Italy, uh, mm -hmm. Robert um, Speechley from Czech Republic. And, you know, there was a few. And we, we were ready for it. You know, we were going to be the pioneers of the, the new era. And literally, they come out of the meeting, 30 seconds later, it was, uh, right, Ian, Duh. Emilio, duh, 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 we're going. <laughs> So right. literally, we had from September um, to March to find a venue, to market, to get everything in preparation for it, to raise awareness, because one of the problems with the previous league was the fact that they managed to sustain so much, uh, sorry, hold back so much information from athletes about what actually happened in America, yes. what goes on. Of it was, a, you know, we were there, not just marketing, we were educating people. We were there showing people this is what it should be like. And I already had experience of it. You know, I'd already been to you know, 30, 40 shows and seen that this is just a complete opposite of what we were being told. Yeah. How did so, you get to that point, man? Well, like where the amateur league is like, it is so different from the pro league, yet the amateur league feeds the pro league with their athletes, and yet they're just so well, different. That was, like, that was, that it was, was like disconnect. classic bodybuilding with different weight limits to classic physique. It was always so confusing. It was like, how did this happen? Well, that, that, was, the, that was the complete disconnect. I mean, in my life, my, one of my major sporting things, I'm, I'm a footballer, you know, I've played football yeah. since I was like five years old, played it till I was like 35, you know, everything. I've, I've only ever known that system where you progress and when you go up a league, it's the same as the previous league, but the standard's better. Yeah. So obviously when I was looking into all of this and you've got, for instance, wellness, you know, and you go, okay, so who's in wellness at the Olympia? And they go, oh no, we don't do wellness. <laughs> yeah. And you go, what? So you've got an amateur league where people compete in a division and when they win, they don't go anywhere. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, what about bodybuilding? They go, oh yeah, bodybuilding does. Yeah. And I was just looking at thinking, this is so disconnected. How yeah. how can they be doing this and it, it doesn't so comply? With... And then the other thing was, one of the things that I was always knowledgeable of was the bikini. Because yeah. Yeah. they used to pose a certain way in amateur bikini. Yeah. And then it was a yeah, completely yeah. different way in pro bikini. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. So hold on. So you become a pro and then you've like got to start again. Yeah. You know, and it was like, why aren't you complying to what your higher league does? So for me, with this opportunity that was presented to me, it was really simple. I didn't have to reinvent the wheel. It's like, no, no. okay, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to copy what the Pro League does. That's yeah. what it should yeah, be, though. That's, That's what it should I don't be. know how the, where the disconnect ever came from. Like I, we was in, obviously, I can speak for our own category, like classic. It was like different the the weight limits were different to the weight limits of the pro leagues and then when we was also different doing uh, doing different poses and that and i was like this is confusing but do, do you know <laughs> what that done sense. that just puts you know in terms of one of the things i've learned from this industry is um progression improvement mm. so you spend your life trying to progress trying to improve and when you actually make it you've got to start again it's, an, yeah. it's actually a setback yeah exactly exactly and it yeah. was like, no, this should be just a, a step on the journey of improvement and trying to reach, obviously, professional status that you're able to yeah. build from that platform yeah. and continue, mm -hmm. which, right. again, obviously, that does happen now. Yeah. You know, and not only that, one of the wider issues was now you can actually progress. You're not stunted. Yeah. You're not kept back. You know, there's a lot of opportunities to win a pro card. Mm. And I don't feel it's saturation of a pro card because all you're doing is you're coming into the, the premiership. Now, mm. it, for me, you know, there's 30 bikini shows. There's 20 men's bodybuilding shows. It doesn't matter if there's a thousand pro bodybuilders, because do you know what? No, there's God, only going to be 20 of the best out of that thousand that enter a competition mm. that are going to make it to Olympia, which is the ultimate yeah. goal. Yeah. So, you know, if you suck <laughs> yeah. and you're a yeah. bodybuilder and you got in through some back door somewhere yeah you're never going to make any you're never going to get anywhere you know yeah. and and that to me is the you know the the streamlining of the process because mm. 
it's not like there's a thousand bodybuilders and there's a hundred shows. No, mm. there's 20. Yeah. So no matter what you do, unless you are the best of the best, you're never going to get there. Mm. But you've mm, got actually, to get to that level first. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. So people spoke, uh, speak about like the saturation of the pro card and stuff like that. And I've, my reply has always been, well, the best will still be the best. The best will exactly. rise to the top. So it doesn't really matter. Like the people are so stuck in their ways. Like, oh, fucking pro card should be so coveted. It's like, man, like bodybuilding is progressing. It's 2020 now. You know, bodybuilding has been about a long time. It's going to progress at some point. Like, well, the coveting of the pro card is because it was held back, because they made it such a goal to reach a pro card. And all yeah. we've done is signified what a pro card means. It's yeah. not a trophy. Okay. Mm. It's not a goal. It's a step. No, you've exactly. entered the next league. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. It's great to be an IFBB pro and it's a, it's an achievement, but that's not, that's only part of the journey. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah you know, everybody course. knows that if you are committed and if you are serious and you have a real goal and you want to achieve greatness, that's winning a pro show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and on it's not I've won a pro card so I'm like the best in the world no you're the worst yeah. of the best in the world yeah it's, <laughs> it's like you go from being the best amateur to the worst pro yeah which is like it, football isn't it? Like it's like that. moving up from the championship to the premiership it's like you go from the top right and now you're at the bottom and you start again like yeah. I said, it's just yeah, a progression yeah. it's just you've got to regroup absolutely. you've got to reform you've got to try another strategy exactly you know, you know that's why when pubs come franchise. up from the championship they get mm. given a load of money you know why because they've got to then improve they've got yeah, to buy yeah. players to be able to compete yeah, and it's the yeah. same with us. It's, it's exactly yeah. what we do. You know, we just try and put it, we, we try and take away the fact that a pro card is a trophy and it's more of a case of it's a step on the way to winning, yeah. to becoming great. Yeah. But the name yeah, was um, myself and Bob um, sat down and one of Bob's gripes was all these three lettered federations that pipe up, you know, the DBGF and the FBD and it's that everybody's yeah, got yeah. three or four letter um, <laughs> federation. So we looked at it and we said, okay, how do we not be a three letter federation? Yeah. So we said, well, let's, let's have a brand name. And yeah. so I was saying, you know, and we're me and Bob are calling each other, bro. Yeah, bro. Let's do this, bro. And I said, well, hold on. Two yeah, bros. Yeah. And so when it was two bros, it was like, but this is a modern day two bros. Yeah, yeah, so who was the, who was the original two bros? You know, uh, Joe and Ben. Yeah. Uh, yeah there you yeah, go. Yeah. So there's more bros than there is two, but it's a modern adaptation of the two bros, the two yeah. bros, Joe and Ben. And because of the change in the, the, the global body building um, landscape that's why it's you know what if it's going to change now in 2017 let's get away and let's modernize what we do by mm. calling each other by calling it two bros pro two bros yeah. professional events yeah fantastic fantastic i just wanted to add something here which is which is really important because you're trying to obviously modernize bodybuilding in um uh, as in keep the aesthetics of you know uh of the original bodybuilding that we've started with as you said you guys used a, uh, an amazing example as you know joe and ben weeder of how their vision was and you're obviously trying to build up on that in our modern days today obviously we have social media now we have a lot of different uh, platforms of marketing and channels of marketing uh john and i i don't know if you were you were aware of this we uh well john held a uh, a posing seminar and uh alongside our podcast that is slowly picking up now the the, the posing seminar that john uh, held i was there to supervise with him and we felt like we have uh, a responsibility to to show the new bodybuilders how to pose mm. and how to how modern bodybuilding should be looking like but in the aesthetics of the old days and being healthy like the old days so I can relate to what you guys have done and where, where John and I and our vision's going today. Um, but one question that raises itself here. I mean, obviously, as a promoter, I'm not sure how much of an effect or an influence you have on judging and how the judging works. Uh, zero. But we, obviously, zero. Yeah, yeah, in that sense. But as in when you sit down in meetings with them, how about, I mean, we were suggesting, John and I, where we could uh, bring something back, which is, the, the posing routines to be judged or at least uh, getting, you know, we, you know, get, you get marked down on, on bad posing 
and you know it could be marked maybe or at least a trophy of, of the best poser where it gives people kind of an incentive to get another extra trophy to put an effort into into their uh we, their posing we, we have actually had that at the british finals where um the most muscular and we yeah. we can as promoters bring it in um privately as a personal thing that we can do um but the 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 thing is, it's, it's it will be posing will be marked down on if you're not performing the correct poses. So you can have the best physique, but if you do go into the pose round, you don't perform the the statutory posing, you will be marked down on that. So mm. it is something. And, and and listen, let's get it straight. You know, there is always that part in the show where you're watching the the call outs and the comparisons, but it's also for me. I do enjoy watching the posing because that's, mm. for me, that's the entertainment part. That's the mm. part where you see people putting in a different routine and to music and how they're actually able to manage to put the posing into those routines. So it is enjoyable. Um, it is a, is a more of a, you know, a calm entertainment part of the show. But again, you've got to remember this, this isn't, you know, Britain's got talent. This is, I yeah, but zinc. man, po but posing, man, posing is part of it. Posing is part of it. You know, like we work. That that's why I think posing. Like I said, I don't know how you would get to a point where you would change the the judging so that, especially in classic physique, that that posing the posing round is judged. You know, because the guys are going to do it anyway. Like to me, that posing round has to be judged. Then I would love to see for it to i mean like like you say i'm not sure if you could bring it into two bros events but i'd love I mean, to see I, I, in two bros where like said, that my, was actually judged any, anything do it, to do let, let me tell you what i do yeah from the sec from anything you do in terms of contacting us mm. to coming in the building to getting spray tanned to the point where your toe touches the corner of that stage the minute your toe goes over that line of that stage you're nothing to do with me that is How? Jim Mannion. He's Tyler neglecting Mannion, us already. <laughs> Robin Chang. And the second you step off that stage, you're my responsibility again. What happens on that stage is the pro league's jurisdiction. Could you bring I about have, a best poser award then? We could. We could. I think we, we like I said, I think we we've done it in the Brit that. British finals. But again, it's more of a personal thing. I think... Um, what, this think year at the British finals, best poser? Yeah. No, because I didn't get it. <laughs> no, next... Ne next year, but it would only go to the best okay. poser, though, John. So uh -huh. <laughs> you have to be you have to be cognizant of the fact that I was going to say. People, I was just when you said that, I was just say. looking at my trophy, uh, my trophy wall right here, and I was like, uh, no, I don't see it. Yeah, but there's other people <laughs> you compete against, John. I don't know whether you've noticed, but no, you're not I didn't. The, I didn't. <laughs> you're not the only one on stage. <laughs> no, but in all in all seriousness, that would be amazing to see, like a a, be, a alongside the most muscular, a best poser award um, available. You know, you see the other specific, thing, is not well. specifically for classic. You know, to open well, you can, you classic, can do it. They'd have to earn it. You know, no, you can do it. But the problem okay, you've also yeah. got that would is be that cool. um, only the top five. Um, pose so not yeah, everybody I mean, gets the pose yeah but it's probably only going to be one of the top five that win it anyway to be fair well, not necessarily i mean for me uh, in terms of bodybuilding the the best poser i see is samson dauda but if he's not in the top five he's not getting to do his routine mm. but in my in my opinion if they're not in shape the routine's not that good anyway because they're still not they're not like again this is this is part of a great yeah I know, this, this is bodybuilding good. i've got to get it in still though but the poser you know it's not <laughs> shredded if you're not in shape, poser routine don't look that good anyway. But no, it, it would be comment. it would be great to see a, a best poser award. That would be awesome because even even just that that would give incentive to the bodybuilders to be better at posing. You know, because that's a nice little that's a nice little trophy to have in your plaque. That's a nice bit like of accreditation you could say to people that have yeah. won that award. You know, I mean, I so think that like would I make them in, put more effort into it. That would be in, cool. in the British finals we brought in um, a most muscular for the bodybuilders, yeah. and I think it was. Uh, Daniel Mahmood won that, I think. Mm. Um, but he didn't win the pro card, you know, Rob Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that was a little bit of um, accreditation for Daniel, although he didn't win the pro card. But yeah. he's, there's, there's a lot of, um, I think we've got about 14 uh, super heavies uh, this yeah. year for bodybuilding already registered. Oh, nice. It's so that's going to be, uh, that's going to be one to watch. 
Yeah. Right? Of course, of course. I have I have a comment to make here, uh, Ian. You know, um, I I love uh, Samson. He's he's a good bodybuilder. He's a dedicated bodybuilder. And just for the comment that you made, that you think he's the best bodybuilder. Uh, sorry, he's the best poser. In in my opinion, um, he does know how to pose. He has a swag to him, beautiful swag. You know, he knows how to put transitions together. He needs his signature. It's it's got Kai Green written written all over him hmm. and he needs to stop the, the 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 hand gestures that look make him look a lot like a copy of kai green and i hope he's listening to this because this is constructive criticism even though he's a pro we know how to pose i've been in the industry probably longer than him just because i didn't turn pro it doesn't mean i'm not you know aware old yeah. i'm too old <laughs> um <laughs> but in in terms of in terms of samson he has a chance to become a better poser if he adds his own signature, his own stamp, you know, into, into the poses rather than, um, you know, trying to copy a lot of Kai Green's moves. Well, he can because he's got, he's got the moves. The guy has moves. He knows how to, how to move on stage. He's got the, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the personality on stage. A lot of the guys just stand and just hit a most muscular. He's, that, he's not that kind of guy. He likes the art of bodybuilding. So that's just my point to, to make uh, on that. But as I said, as a pro in the UK, I think, yes, he's the best poser. He's probably better than James Hollingshead, best, better than Nathan, uh, with all due respect to the other guys. Uh, well, no, no, as bodybuilders, as in class. Oh, okay. oh, I thought you were oh, you're just talking about open class. Okay. Uh, yeah, open class, <laughs> in the open class, in the, the big oh, okay, guys. Okay. Um, but um, uh, as I said, uh, we'd, we'd, uh, we'd love – Ian to come and attend some of your seminars and and help out if you need us um you know with with your posing seminars I was just uh just us hanging out with you as well and and putting our <laughs> tips you know it's because because we we I haven't seen each other for a long bar. time I'm, I'm, I'm always at the bar that's where we'll, I we'll, well yeah it's fine we'll bring our Tupperwares into the bar and sit down and have our chicken and rice there <laughs> <laughs> right um the thing is I I have a question out here from from the crowd and I'd like to basically put it out there because a lot of people want to hear it from you Ian and it's really important it's as I said when I said in the beginning that you're an important person to us today in in the industry it's there's a lot of questions in the air that people want to hear from you and it's very important that we send this message the honest message to to the to all the athletes um the, the 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 reason why we kind of shifted away from the UK BFS, and I'm going to be straight up about this. This is yeah, all wrong. That's one of my one, one of my um, benefits is that I'm always quite straight. And I think I think John would agree with me on this. And because the, because of the way it was ran, I mean, I I have like a like a master's degree in or a PhD in second place because they didn't like me. It's not because I didn't win shows. I keep getting second place. And then other categories would go top three qualify. And then my, my category would be like, yeah, second place, only the first goes to the final. So they, and then I had an incident where I was given a, a business card to go see them after the show. So one of the reasons for us to move away from this, excuse my language, all this BS, you know, is because of that. And we that's why we're here. Like, that's yeah. exactly why we're here. And Politics. here, here. Yeah. I mean, um, I have a question from the crowd and I really need you to put it together here. One answer for us to just put it to sleep once and for all. 10, 10 X athletes apparently winning most shows. Is that, is that something like they get sponsored after they win or they get a sponsorship before and it takes them up to the win? This is very important for us to answer this. I know the answer, but I just want to put it out there in public. Okay. So the fact of the matter is, is that anybody can be sponsored by anyone. Okay. Whether it's before the show, after the show, I have no idea when or where or how they get sponsored. 10 X are an, a sponsored company of two bros, the same as trained by JP nutrition, the same as, same as chemical warfare. Mm -hmm. But the thing that everybody has to remember is this is not the old days. I would be doing myself a disservice to have anything to do with anything that's corrupt in any way, shape or form that could lead to any athlete winning anything because of who they're sponsored by. Okay. The trouble you get is when there's so many sponsored athletes by a certain company, 
it's inevitable some of them are going to win. <laughs> of course. Mm. It's a numbers game, isn't it? <laughs> and, and that's what I'm saying. So what you've got to remember is that the judges, okay, the judges are professional judges. They struggle because they know they're up for so much scrutiny. They mm. struggle between themselves and it's a stress for them to pick the right person, okay? The right person that deserves to win and deserves to win only because those, Afri those judges have no idea who they're sponsored by. They mm. see people in a bikini and a pair of shorts. And when you've got 40 people on stage and you're looking at physiques, you'd, be, you'd, you'd have a superpower if you could pick someone out and go, right, okay, they're nearly good enough to win. <laughs> and they're a trained by JP athlete. They're a 10X athlete. Those judges have literally 20 seconds to mm -hmm. try and pick out uh, six people from the crowd as they're coming by. And remember, they're, they're sat there for 10 or 12 hours. You know, it's mentally draining for them. It is, so it to is. be able to do what they do and worry about the scrutiny that they're up against in order to pick the right person to win a pro card, do you seriously think they've got the ability to work out? I mean, listen, I have people that speak to me all the way up to a show, yeah? And I'm speaking to them, I'm giving them tips, pointers, you know, giving them information. Show day. Hi, Ian, how you doing? I'm not thinking, who's that? They look totally different. I can't. And, and then a week later, they come and speak to me. And I'm speaking to them, and I'm looking at so them, that's I'm thinking... That's why you blanked me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, honestly, Dave, after, I after didn't that, have a I was clue. Around, like, <laughs> Dave, I, I was, swear, <laughs> I didn't realise. He was well all right, that Ian, before I... <laughs> <laughs> Dave, listen to me. You'll get over it, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but listen oh, to me it, you I, couldn't I, believe how difficult it is for the judges just to actually do their job rather than to think and listen what do they get from it oh i'm going to pick a 10x athlete or i'm going to pick a trained jp they're, they're independent judges they get zero from it would, they get um, paid very little for what actually the the amount of you know yeah. um, responsibilities they have but the judges do it because it's a passion of theirs and they have a responsibility to make sure the best physique won. And you know why they do that? Because that's what the old people didn't do. Mm. That's what the whole reason we're here is because of what happened with Faisal's situation is that we stick to the rules. And no matter who's on stage, someone has to win. And it's yeah. the same rules from Italy, Spain, Brazil, America. We don't yeah. move around. We can't move around. Otherwise, we'd be the same as the old people. Yeah. And In all fairness. I've, I'm, I've, I'm being straight with you as well. There, I can't think of a situation in the last three years where anybody can really say that there has been a bad judging decision. No. So I was going to say, I've been to, I've been to a shit ton of, you know, past shows and, and I've been to a lot of two bro shows. Um, and I've never been to a show at Two Bros. I've probably been to about five or six of them where I've said, oh, that was a completely bad call, you know. The best guy always wins. Because I get people come and ask me as, you know, someone who's been through the amateurs now, and they're like, ah, oh, but, you know, but freaking 10X or, or whatever company it is, or, oh, he's sponsored by this guy, he's going to get it. And it's like, I've never, um, I've never seen that. From what I've seen, the best guys always win. And that's just, I think people just get it in their heads. That because that they're a, thinking in the old way. That's the problem. They yeah, think that yeah. there's some I mean, sort I, of... I, I was yeah. a part of it. I was a part of it. When I went in 2017, I, um, I was uh, coached by one of the judges at UK BFF. <laughs> I was. Not, not because I, in once the slightest bit, I thought being coached by a judge was going to help me win on stage. I, it was really? Second, no, it was only my second year competing. I only started in 2016, 2017, and I was approached. Uh, I spoke to uh, Sean Panther, and he helped me out. And he taught me. We do, we do that to get a call out. Yeah, <laughs> mate. He t uh, he, I, I've already set my record shape, but he taught me a lot, you know. And then I won 2017. I won the British. And the amount of people that said, ah, it's because of this, ah, it's because of that. And I said, well, don't so, worry about it, because I'll win two bros when I next do it in 2019. So do you know what it is? Do you know what we try and keep away from? Is mm. It's called a hint of impropriety. Okay, and we recently had 
a judge that started off with us, yeah, that we felt was showing a hint of impropriety. So guess what happened? We got rid of him. Yeah. Okay. He was fired by the pro league because we weren't prepared to have any hint of impropriety that could possibly be linked to the old guard. Okay. Mm. We have an integrity of a company that puts on bodybuilding shows and they people are judged fairly and professionally. It is an excuse, if you ask me, for someone to use the fact that they might be sponsored by this company or they're coached by this person as the fact that yeah. they didn't win. Mm. Yeah? The fact of the matter is, is if you didn't win, you weren't good enough. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I think people just don't like to take the hit, do they? And no, of course. also, what you have to remember, again, this is in my experience. This is, I've been... At the, I'm at the top end of bodybuilding. I've also been from sitting in the crowd as a spectator. Okay. I know that any athlete that wins a show wants to win it on merit, mm. not because of who they're sponsored by, not because of who they know. It Absolutely. takes away the whole integrity of it. Mm. And at the same time, this is about self-improvement. You know, every time you step on stage, you have to be better than your previous self. Okay, you, yeah. you're an absolute advocate, John. You told me from day one when I approached you to come and do the show, you said, I'm not going to step on stage until mm. I am ready, until I'm bet, until I feel I'm going to compete. Yeah. And you know, I was guided with that. But the first time you stepped on stage, you tried to blackmail me, you tried everything, everything. threaten you, blackmail you, you know, none mm. of it worked. <laughs> but you were better than the last time you came up sta on stage. Mm. and you were very patient in how you took your approach to it and it mm. paid off. Now, the thing is, is if you'd have come to that competition and you weren't better than your previous self, you wouldn't have competed. No. I know you, you wouldn't have done it. You would have gone, right, no, I'm not good enough. But what you have to remember as well is there's 20 other people that are doing that as well. Mm. But if you've improved just a little bit better than they have, that's the difference. It's not just because they put 110% in, it's mm. because the stages of improvement are different. So again, it's the old cliche, but you have to be better than your previous self. And on the day, if you happen to be better than the other competitors, you'll win. Yeah. So the, the biggest you know, disappointment is when you know you've put 110% into your prep, your diet, you've stuck to everything, and yeah. you've come third. Yeah. You haven't come third because you didn't try. You yeah. came third because someone was better than you. We improved more. That's the nature oh. of the beast. Yeah, but that's what, and it's a bit of, bit of pill to swallow. But as you know, for the first week or so, they're probably pissed off. But yeah. after that, they all start to, everybody starts to think and go, right, okay. Well, when you look at the yeah. comparison photos, you then start to go, well, I actually was a little bit better in this particular part. And then you get your judges feedback. And do you know what everybody does? They reset and they go, right, that's what I'm going to focus on to improve. Yeah. Mm. That's what Michael needs to do, doesn't he? Rather than just saying shows one from the back, he needs to reset. Oh. <laughs> okay, Ian, you're, you're probably not, you're not aware of that. There's a, there's a bit of rivalry going on here uh, between Michael Double and, uh, and John. It's not even a rivalry. It's a, no, it's a, bit, of, a, bit, a bit of, uh, I'm just uh, what do you call it, trash talk going on. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we can get them both to, uh, I don't know, the British Grand Prix, we don't have any, we don't have any, um, uh, uh, the classic division is not even there, right? Not this yeah. year. One day, one day. One, 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 day. one day we'll do it. When it's, when it's economically viable, yeah. maybe when, when we're in a different landscape, we'll be able to do the full, you know, full pro show. But as it stands... Do you or are you not, not sure? Again, we've got to see how this whole thing plays out, you know. Yeah. Again, you've got to remember, as much as I love doing what I do, I love seeing people achieve, I love seeing people win in the face of adversity, I love all of that. I still can't pay money out of my own pocket oh, yeah. <laughs> in order to have things happen, you know. And, and, yeah. and, I'd, and I'd love to have a full pro show, but I'd probably have to sell my house if that was the case. Yeah. Well, Hopefully. it'll come. I think, I think it's a business, you know, the, the business that you've started has to start off with just about breaking even. And it's just like mm -hmm. another business, I guess. And, the, and at some point it will, it will grow. But, 
but do you know what it is? It's, it's a business that we need your support. We need people like yourselves. We need the spectators. We need the understanding of bodybuilding fans to understand if we're going to be able to do what we want to do for everybody. It's mm. about everybody being a part of it. You know, everybody has to support us. Everybody has to put a little bit of effort in. Everybody has to come and buy a ticket. Everybody has to try and register. You know, it, it's, yeah. it really is one of the only industries I've been involved in, which is a real collective a family that everybody has to support and obviously spread the word and encourage and mm. like i said that's the only way it's going to grow is by getting more support and help from the bodybuilding public yeah so anyone watching this you know who competes in pca sort it who? out <laughs> <laughs> sort it out is that another three letter federation <laughs> <laughs> well um, the thing is, with, with, with the brand of, of Two Bros Pro, um, I found one little thing that I was really, really impressed with. I, as you probably saw me coming with AJ, I was covering with MD, you know, doing the play for play. And um, it, was, it was fascinating that for the first time I see uh, the, a promoter or a head of a federation or, or a, a big character in, in, in the show that comes out to meet us in the front. And it was so casual where back in the day where the head of the other federation, I'm not going to mention, he would walk by and it's like a dictatorship. Everyone goes, you know, bow, bow, guys, come on, bow, he's here, you know. Um, it, I, I, I can't ever be like that. That is not in my makeup, you know. Someone has to make a decision, okay. Someone has to be in charge, which I am. I have that responsibility, but... Like I said to you before, it's about everybody. It's about making everything accessible. Everybody's accessible nowadays. If you want to know something, if you want to ask something, if you want to have a conversation, do it. You know, I'm, I'm just the same as everyone else. And that's why I say you might put me as an important person, but I'm just one of you. I'm just mm. the same as everybody else. Just putting, owning a company, putting on shows. Mm. I'm no different to anyone else. I just happen to be that person. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, do you think? Do you think at some point um, you'd be sending athletes abroad to compete with some sort of support, like uh, you know, you know, if it's Team Great Britain having a tr you know Team GB well, like a, a you know track suits with 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 we, promotions we, we, on it, and we were just about to do that. That was what was coming for the um, Athleticon. Nice. No. What? Uh, really? What? Yeah, what? it was the pro, um, pro athletes. Yeah, pro and amateur. Oh, will I get my name on the tracksuit and everything? That'll be cool, won't it? No. No, it's only the best to get a tracksuit, John. <laughs> <laughs> so he's gonna kill you today, I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> I'm not even gonna ask I'm not even gonna ask to hand out the trophy to the classic to the classic winner. Oh, thanks for that. Yeah? Thanks for not asking. <laughs> Appreciate that. I I I, I think terrible I when think... you put me in a situation like that, especially on air that I have to say no, so I appreciate that. <laughs> oh my god. But, um, uh, but yeah, that was that so was good. on the cart. Athleticon, there was a point system lined up. It was about the best five in each division from each country that were going to accumulate points to be able to compete at Athleticon, as well as um, the rules for the pro show was obviously anybody who'd won a pro show would be there and they'd be representing their country. Um, well, so yeah, it was going to be two bros, Team GB, you know, name on the tracksuit, other than John's. And... Um, that kind of setup, you know, everybody traveling to the US and everything. So unfortunately, you know, that's been put back because of the current landscape again. But, but that was something I was excited about, you know. Does that, that was... mean that our budget's going to be better for next year because you didn't spend the budget from this year? Budget? Well, budget. aren't you budgeting just for got, There's no budget. There's a credit card. <laughs> okay, there's a credit card. Statement okay. that I get through budget. the door each year and whatever's left to spend, <laughs> that's the budget. <laughs> No, but uh, we're, we're used to budgeting in this country, you know, like since I've been here, like, you know, 20 old years, <laughs> everything is like, you speak, you know, parliament budgeting. Damn, man, where's the money going? No, listen, we, we, we operate from week to week. Oh, so where's the money if, going? If you, if you catch us on a good cool. week, okay. then uh, you'll get a good show. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, John, there's, there's a question for you here. Yes. So, so, Ian gives you a phone call right now and says, listen, you have – you know, six weeks, we need, we need to put Team GB together. Hmm. All right. Six weeks, because yeah. I've, I've seen it happen with Charles Claremont back in the 90s. <laughs> All right. 
Okay. They gave him six weeks to get ready for a show, and he ended up hiding behind Dorian. So, <laughs> um, you know, you know, in this situation for you, what, what, how would your reaction be? You know, like what would, what, what would you, would you accept the offer and take it and just go in as you are? You've got six weeks. What to get ready for a show? Yeah, six weeks to get ready for a show. Team GB, you know, prize money, you name it, pro show. Nah. It would depend. It depends where I'm at, man. I wouldn't be get on stage at nothing but my best. Every single show that I, every time I get under that lights, it's a, it's a score on my card, you know. So if I'm not bringing my best, I wouldn't do it. No. But so okay, the I question mean, being is at this present moment, in the state you're in, if six. I said six weeks, is oh, it a yeah. yes or a no? Yes, all day long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm you not. See what I mean? Yeah, no. yeah. We got we got yeah. to the truth, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. It's like. <laughs> There, there's, there's two aspects to this, uh, John. There's, there, there's the aspect of you being an athlete and you want to keep your reputation. And there's an aspect mm. of you might have a, a, a fat check in your bank account. So yeah. you, have to, you have to think about, you know. Money is definitely a motivator. No, I, th I think it's opportunity. Think. It's collectively. It's opportunity, it's experience, yeah. and it's money. Now, yeah. if you weren't necessarily at your best, but this was a, an opportunity to have an experience to further your knowledge on how to go about you take it you take it to be part of the you know the the the, the event uh, like if, I, it's, if it's athletic on if it's yeah. athletic on and you uh, you're the yeah. only men's physique uh, men's classic physique we've got yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't miss up the opportunity to do something like that you're right uh, yeah. That's awesome, because there's no expectations but, on you well, I'm, I'm never that fat anyway so I probably there you go i mean there's another point though don't be that much out of shape that if the call comes that yeah. you're not in a position to take it. Yeah. Well, mate, that's something that Jay Cutler was. Jay Cutler would be in, in pretty good shape year round, you know, to do um, seminars and uh, posing like guest spots and stuff like that. But so, you know what that comes down to? That comes down to being a, a professional, professional athlete. Yeah, professional. yeah, yeah. I agree. Professionalism. It's, it comes down to marking yourself. That's what some, something that a lot of guys I see don't understand now is, you know, marketing yourself year round as somebody who somebody else would want to look like, you know, you know why? We'll because no. as you know, there's a hundred other pros mm. and you've got to be a step ahead of them yeah, because yeah, yeah. what you're selling, they're selling as well. So what makes you better? The fact that you're more professional. Oh, I ain't no one selling what I'm selling. <laughs> the, 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 the arrogance comes in now. <laughs> I'm going to think I'm all right. See you then. Oh, well, God. Some, some things have never changed, John. So I've been all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. So um, now, so, hold, hold on, hold on. Before you move on, Faisal, sorry, I just want to get it clear. So is that, is that on a serious note, something that would be a possibility like Athletico next year, Team GB? Is that something? That no, no, it, it is, it's been put back to next year. So it will be taking place. And hopefully if the whole COVID thing has settled down a little bit, come January, I mean, mm. even for two bros, I mean, we want to go back to our original um, timetable. Our schedule was last yeah. year, which was bringing back the regional Region. qualification yeah. in order to be able to compete in a, in a qualification show. Yeah. Well, boy, you know, that, that, that's what I'm saying. It's not fair to do that. There's not enough time. There's not enough people. It wouldn't give credit yeah. to the actual pro show itself. So again, we've had to take a step back in terms of our progression as a, as a country, trying to bring back in the regional qualification and trying to bring back the amateurs in order to mm. make the level higher again. Exactly. You know, that, Standards, that was, isn't it? Yeah, that, that was, I mean, at their height, I think the UK BFF, uh, I think that's sound like 30 shows and their British finals had sort of, I think it was like maybe 1,500 people in it, was it? Yeah, it, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's achievable and that is a goal for us, okay? Mm. That's where we want to be and I think, you know, we're, we're on the path to doing that and this year was going to be a really good year to be sort of two-thirds there. Mm. But this thing knocked us back, but it might have knocked us back, but it's not going to stop us. Yeah. So obviously next year we want to continue on that path and that's where we want to find ourselves within the next couple of years. We want 1,500 people, uh, athletes at a British finals that have qualified and bring back, you know, the whole experience, atmosphere, you know, of that particular setup. And then we want to move beyond that. Yeah. Sure. You know, we've got, we, our two bros' plan isn't just about having shows. We've got a lot of other things planned 
that is going to revolutionise bodybuilding in the UK and bring it up to the standard. And this isn't pie in the sky. Bring it up to an equivalent standard of football, basketball and everything else. Yeah, Obviously, be- we're never going to be as big as them. But no. what we want to do is we want to copy that format. I've and we want to have... Monday Night Muscle, I've seen that. That's pretty cool. Seen what, sorry? Uh, they're doing Monday Night Muscle, aren't they? With uh, Sean Ray and Bob Chick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. But this is more of a case of what I'm trying to develop yeah. as a sport in this country and have yeah, the same yeah. structure, infrastructure as other sports. Yeah. Mm. That's so cool. That's we've got a plan and it's not just about doing shows. It's not just about bringing athletes in. There is a bigger plan in order yeah. to give bodybuilding as a whole in this country a much bigger yeah. presence in Whatever the sporting is, scene. Sure. Myself, Faz, I'd be love to be in, as much as involved as we can be. It takes yeah, time and we've got a lot of stuff. It takes it. time, it takes money. It's all being put of together course. professionally. But mm. believe me, when that day comes that I'm able to present what our vision is for the future, it will certainly uh, light up the bodybuilding world. Yeah, nice. Oh, I'm getting excited. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, Ian, uh, is there is there going to be live coverage, live streaming for uh, the the British Grand Prix? Yeah, we just um, obviously because we've only just had the venue um, rules and regulations, we've now started to move on to how we can provide not just the British Grand Prix. It's going to be uh, the women's British finals, the men's British finals, nice. Ben Weeder. Um, to be able to give everybody the access to the show that aren't able to be there. Because, again, everybody wants to see friends, loved ones, and what have you compete. And Of course. It, this is one of the things that I say is challenging, trying to manoeuvre around that in order to still be able to provide some level of service to the people that support you. Because, again, one of the things you know is that no bodybuilder, whether it be bikini or men's bodybuilding, does it on their own. Of course. Nobody's on their own nobody's just got no friends, no family, no, no one. And they go to the gym and they do all their training themselves. You cannot do what you do without the support of everyone around you. And that comes from gym owners, friends, family, you know, it's tough at first because nobody really understands, but then people who do support you do believe in you start to support you from around your whole network. And they're the people that you really want them to see the, end result of all your hard work and sacrifice and we understand that i mean i've been there so i know what it's like so to miss out on that moment is what we want to try and provide everybody yeah of course so uh john you uh have you have you sorted out everything with uh with spain now yeah man i mean i've got like nearly 30 people that have booked up to come but i don't know what the ticket situation is see that's that's no, an eye opener for you now so i think it's it's a good opportunity for you to actually yeah. maybe call the uh the promoters and see yeah. what's going on there i mean i'm i haven't been told any you know anything like one ticket per person because as far as i can see they've just put tickets on sale and said go you mm. know well i mean listen available. again anyone so. emilio Gianrico, you can mm. contact them it's not, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. they've, they've got um, yeah, vehicles got to be contacted, but you can contact them. Everybody will speak to you. No one will be like, yeah. oh, I'm a, I'm a promoter. I don't need yeah, to speak no, to you. No, no, no. I've, I've, uh, I've spoke to, to, to one of them. I can't remember what it was. And they've, um, they replied to me when I was asking about whether the show is going to be on or something a few months ago. So, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, listen, I, I would just literally send them a DM. They'll respond. Yeah. You know, everybody yeah. wants to have client service, customer service. So they'll respond yeah. to you. Yeah. But yeah, no, I've got about I've got thirty people booked up to come already, so I'm excited. Wow. How much are you paying them? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was about just about to say it's like, yeah. is it a contract yeah. that you've got I with the coach? I was or? to come back or something like that, but I'm not. <laughs> uh, I just want. I wonder, could you give me the I number think, of that? I have to think about the my... crowd as well. I have to... <laughs> I have to think about my comeback, so I'll message you later with it. <laughs> but it will be really fucking good. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be on the knife edge waiting for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm, uh, forward. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So we have uh, uh, Ian. I mean, we've always looked since we were since we were younger. I mean, I've I've been in bodybuilding since I was thir- you know since 1993. So I've been quite a long time in long, this thing. And long, long ago. I mean, yeah, I've been long. bodybuilding from birth. 
I just did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is, we we all knew, uh, you know, one of one of the promoters that we always looked at and and we, we always kind of knew about was Wayne Demilio. And um, I'm in. Oh, so so what, what's what's your what's your opinion about you know obviously the con there's a lot of controversy obviously about you know Wayne Demilio being uh, the man he is, but then let's speak about him as a promoter. What's your, what's your, what's your, how do you look at him as a promoter? Do you see him, you know, successful? Do you, well, how do you find him? My opinion is only an opinion, but from meeting him, from speaking to people and sharing stories upon him was, uh, he wasn't the right person for the job. Mm. Um, his attitude towards the athletes was poor to say the least. And um, it wasn't something that I feel should be replicated uh, in any way, shape or form. Because um, as you know, being in bodybuilding, you know what athletes go through. You know what their mentality is coming into a show. You know how difficult it is, how stressful what we see normal people see as should be nothing. But you know, as a bodybuilder, everything that goes on in the time, the build up before a show, is very it's magnified and it's stressful and yeah. i think our our um responsibility as a promoter is to, to appreciate that understand that and try and minimize any stress to them whatsoever because yeah. you do understand and as a as a non-bodybuilder i already understand so yeah. i don't agree with uh, any of the things that i've heard uh, or the um you know the way you go about it it's not about this is why I say to you, I don't feel I'm an important person. This, this whole thing isn't about me. You know, mm. this, I don't do what I do because of me. I'm not there trying to present myself as this person and get everybody's accolation and have everybody liking my stuff and that. I just want to be successful in the show that we run and to be appreciated by the athletes for running a good show. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. That's really simple. Yeah. Yeah. I have no comment on Wayne because I don't even know who he is. <laughs> You're too young. Yeah. <laughs> so am I. I'm, I'm, I'm much Never. older than me. <laughs> Never. Uh, Wayne Wayne Demilia used to uh, he, he used to be the main promoter for the Mr. Olympia and for a lot of other shows. Oh and, really? Uh, yeah. And um, there was a reason he's not though anymore. Uh, there, there, there's a big reason he's not here <laughs> anymore. Again, um, I, I put it down to that old you know UK BFF. Raphael mentality, Wayne D'Amelio mentality. Mm. Sometimes I feel that in this sport, I've, what I've learned a lot is that people get absorbed by their own authority. And yes. it goes beyond understanding, you know, your authority is something that is a, you know, it, it's, it's not about you. Your authority actually means you take more responsibility and you've got a lot more things that you do that aren't to your benefit, mm. you know? being responsible for something actually means you have to put yourself out, not do less, not expect people to do more for you. Being, mm. For me, I feel I have to do more because I'm responsible for what's happening yeah. with shows. Right, right. Absolutely. Right. Can't, so yeah. the, the further we can get away from the old mentality, and, and I'll tell you why, is because in this day and age, the whole world has changed. It's, it's about appreciating customers you know tesco sainsbury's whatever shopping mart you've got yeah, point yeah. systems you've got offers to entice customers in you know mm. these these people that are being enticed in for their custom these are athletes you know and everyday life they are being presented opportunities to be appreciated mm. they're no different because they come to us they're still that same person that we want their custom and we want to put on the best service for them so that they come back and they use our service again so we yeah. appreciate them as customers because the whole world operates like that there's too much competition now you know there isn't just the one supermarket in town where everyone has to go there's options there's choices you know and if you don't treat your customers with respect like you would like i would you're not going to go there no, so else. it's what people have become accustomed to so when you do get treated unfairly it's natural that you're just going to go, well, I'm not going to go back there. Yeah. And bodybuilding isn't different to the rest of the world. Bodybuilding isn't different to Sainsbury's. Bodybuilding isn't different to buying a Volvo, buying a Rolls Royce. 
Mm. People have to understand this and they get, sometimes they get consumed with their position where they might be in charge of bodybuilding on a Sunday when they go back to working in a garden center on a Monday, you know, yeah, just yeah. because you have that little bit of authority, don't abuse it. Yeah. You know, you're there because it should be something that you should take responsibility for, not abuse it for your own ego. Hmm. Wise words like Yoda, like the yeah. bodybuilding Yoda. So, something like that, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not green, but I'm not small. <laughs> John, can you be quiet? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to lie. This podcast would have just been much better if I weren't here. No, no, it's not that. The thing is, the thing is, John, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it was an eye opener for you now, for, for example, for Spain, you know, it's, mm. uh, you know, you need to find out what's going on. You know, it's, it was very important that we have Ian here today because I am sure there are millions of guys around here, uh, you know, trying to get a lot of answers uh, mm. because of the uncertainty, you know, of, of things. And, uh, you know, what, what you've got to remember is, is it keeps changing. And as a promoter, we're just trying to, some things happen and then change back again. And you yeah. think to yourself, thank God we never said anything because that would have created hysteria. Exactly. So what we try and do is we try and hold off until we have to say something, until we have to do something. And at the same time, we're also hedging our bets as well. We're trying to put things out, hoping that things don't change as well. So it's a, it's a, softly softly baby steps forward trying to get to the end goal without too much disruption too much changing things because again as you know to be six weeks into a prep four weeks and suddenly someone turns the direction on you and says you can only have one that's why we never said anything about tickets because we didn't have any information about tickets yeah. so then when we did get the information we knew that was going to be the situation that's when we said one per athlete now wouldn't it be great if in two weeks time we could say we've got 50 more tickets available yeah. you know? boom but yeah. we don't want to do that now and then say to people in two weeks time oh those 50 tickets that we sold uh, now it's only 20 <laughs> you know that's mm. the sort of place where we're coming from we'd rather release definite 100 percent information and then have better information to release rather than the opposite way it's better to um what's the saying it's better to uh, over um, thing than bitly disappoint over over no, i know it's one of over i can't remember it off the top of my head Don't make I'm promises, not, not making promises you can't keep basically you're trying to do yeah again over deliver yeah. and um yeah. don't disappoint basically yeah yeah no we get that so so to, to cut the story short when are we going out for dinner whenever you pay it's that simple. I, I'm I'm ready. It's fine. It's it's an open it's an open buffet, man. Do you eat sushi? Oh, do I eat sushi? <laughs> There's a bear shit in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I can eat I can eat chicken. Oh, oh yeah! Know. Oh yeah! That'll be that'll be a good good. You know, chicken's good for a change. I guess. What about what about add a, add a side <laughs> of broccoli to them? Add a side of broccoli. <laughs> I've never had chicken, broccoli, and rice before. I mean, most people don't know. No, 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 most no. people John, eat John. cream of rice and shit like John, that. John, no one's offering you rice. It was just <laughs> no, no. It's chicken and broccoli. If you want rice, you bring it yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a sushi house. They, you know what? What rice? <laughs> <laughs> Right, guys. Um, I think I think uh, we've had enough, um, uh, you know, questions uh, answered. And uh, I've got I one, think, uh, one thing I'll yeah. say is, any question you want to ask, just yeah. ask it. DM us. You know, uh, it's, it's a, you can't get caught out telling the truth. So yeah. absolutely, John. You have a question, right? Yeah, I have got one more before we uh, before we wrap it up. Uh, mm -hmm. UK Arnold's is that happening? Do you know? Yeah, it is next year. Fuck yeah! When? October. Fucking right on, motherfucker. This, this question is so important. You're supposed to put it in the beginning. Well, you do not. Oh. Everyone switched off by now. Everybody's, yeah. everybody's like, oh, it's going to end anyway. <laughs> no. It's just but, about to end. No, 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 price, that, that, like... that bit will be going at the front of the little promo I do. Everybody will hear that. <laughs> Don't worry about that. That's awesome. Fucking yeah. I'll be there. That's amazing. Mm. Well, you're going to get a stand, John. October. Uh, yeah, yeah. John, John's going to get a stand for old school. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that'll be nice. And uh, you know, I can, cool. I can, I can, I can do the, the commentating Olympia. with uh, with Sean Ray. It'll be straight after the Olympia. Who? I'll do the commentating with Sean Ray. Sean who? <laughs> oh, he's not doing it anymore. 
Who's Sean who? I don't know. Sean <laughs> who? No, oh, no, no. He's he involved about in him. bodybuilding? He's, he's just another guy. Don't worry about him. Ah, oh, okay. He's just another promoter from some uh, Hawaii stuff, you know, like oh. a Hawaii show. You know what? That is one show I'd love to be invited to. Ian, can you come and help us with the Hawaii show? I mean, <laughs> oh, okay. oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll never get an invite to Hawaii. Let me check my schedule. Yes, yes, I'm okay. <laughs> Pittsburgh, you know what I mean? Pittsburgh, Florida, yeah, all right. But Hawaii, come on. Yeah, that's, that's a different want, level. Who wouldn't want to compete in Hawaii? Florida's nice, though, isn't it? I'm going to yeah, do it. It's okay, but, but it's not Hawaii. But it's not Hawaii, exactly. What What is it with... Uh, this is completely off topic. It just popped in my head, though. What is it with people uh, not doing other shows? Like, if they do the Olympia, then they do no other shows. What, no, what? Because the top five of Olympia automatically qualify. Yeah, but they're scared to put their... Put their Shit well, I'm good well the, the question being is, do you need to compete um, if you're already qualified? You know, would you rather have the time off to build, grow, make sure you're in the best shape possible for your next Olympia? I'd want to um, dominate. I'd want to win every show. Not every show. I, I, I appreciate arms. that. I mean, listen, there has been, I think um, this year, uh, some of the top fives from each division did start to compete in other pro shows. That would be but, cool. The problem you've got is if you're already qualified for Olympia and you win a pro show, you're taking away someone's place as well. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do a pro show. I mean, like the Arnold's. Like, it would be cool. Now you've got UK Arnold's that like, one year, if you got to that point where yeah. you could try and that is a, That is a pro show, though. Uh, the Arnold's. The same, oh, yeah, but okay. It's the same situation, you know. It is a pro show. You still, if you come first in bodybuilding in the Arnold's, you qualify for the Olympia. Oh, okay. So this is how so, much knowledge I have. But even so, imagine doing the UK Arnold's, the Arnold's of America, and the Olympia all in one year, the triple. No, but you've got you still got Europe because Europe is still not part not of with us. Not, not with, with us. us. Oh, okay, okay. Hmm. Well, we don't I'm speak about them. That's like Voldemort. That's all like right, Voldemort all right. From I, Harry apologize. I, apo I apologize. I apologize, guys. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> They're the other people. Yeah. Right. So, John, any more questions? No, man. Had so, a great chat. I I really enjoyed this, Ian. Thank you very much for uh, for coming on. And taking the time, I'm sure you're a busy man. And uh, I mean, obviously, this dinner thing has to happen anytime soon. Um, this is a, a definite thing. And um, we'll see you guys uh, at the British finals. Yeah. yeah. Again, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me on. And uh, I've enjoyed Our it pleasure. as well. Yeah, Our pleasure. Good. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, John. Uh, guys, thanks, if John. you want to thanks, follow, follow, follow Ian, One Bro Pro, on his One Instagram. Yeah, one bro pro and two bros pro, of course, guys, just for you to keep up with the news. And uh, thanks again from myself, the dictator, Faisal, and John Lofthouse, IFBB pro. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, guys. See you later. Peace, See man. You.